Jesus. For without Jesus, there is no hope. Without Jesus, we do not have life. And without Jesus, we have no salvation. But all things are possible through him. And he is our life. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You know, studying the scriptures, you go through the scriptures and everything, and one thing that comes out is that Jesus says that he is Lord over the Sabbath. We always have, always have to be mindful that he is Lord of the Sabbath. And, just, and praise God, uh, he says, we sing a song every time. This is the day that the Lord has made. So this is the Lord's day, or this is a Sabbath day. And every day is a Sabbath day when we are in the Lord. Amen. For we have entered into the Sabbath or into the rest of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Now, Today and all this week, it's all going to be about Easter and what's to come. And, uh, and, every, and the whole so-called Christian world is going to be celebrating Easter week. Well, the scripture says, and you can read this and we'll read it later on. He says that Jesus died according to the scriptures and he rose according to the scriptures. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem, it wasn't on a Sunday. It was on a Saturday, the Sabbath day. He just reaffirming that he is Lord of the Sabbath. So when they said, Hosanna in the highest, and they brought him in on, the, on that ass, proclaim that he is Lord of the Sabbath. And then seven days later, when another Sabbath day came around, which was a Saturday, and he rose according to the scriptures, and him being Lord of the Sabbath, he rose on the Sabbath day, which was a Saturday. Not Easter Sunday morning, but Saturday just before the end of the day, 6 p.m. You looked in the scriptures. <clears throat> this is what he says. Search the scriptures, for in them you, they testify of me. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Jesus died according to the scriptures. On the tenth day of the month of Nisan, they chose a lamb. And on the 10th day of the month of Nisan, Jesus rode into Jerusalem. And on the 14th day of the month of Nisan, they, they killed the lamb between evenings. And on the 14th day of the month of Nisan, Jesus died. And he was in, in the bowels of the earth for three days and three nights. Come on. So you check it out, and it doesn't line up to be Friday and Sunday. Come on. 72 hours is from Wednesday to Saturday. This is according to the scriptures. All right? This is what we have to look at. Jesus being Lord of the Sabbath. Hallelujah. How do I know he rose on a Saturday? Because he says the first day of the week they came to the, came to the tomb and he wasn't there. Praise God. <clears throat> now I'm in Acts. And what, what we sang in that song about a, 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 a sound that came from heaven, a rushing light, mighty wind. Praise God. That's all at the beginning of Acts. I'm going to start in um, chapter, chapter 2, verse 21. Hallelujah. And Peter is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's proclaiming what has happened. And this is what he says. He, and he goes on, he says... And he says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. We have all called upon the name of the Lord. The name of our Lord is Jesus. 
and we've called upon him, so we have been saved. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise God. And he goes on, he says, Ye men of Israel, hear the, these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Whatever Jesus did, he did by the authority and power of his Father, God Almighty. He didn't do anything of himself until he went to the cross. Right? So, he's, so he had to be approved of God because he says, I come in the name of my Father, and he'll back me up. And we saw all the signs, we saw all the miracles, that Jesus did, or that God did through Jesus, God approving him. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. God already knew what was going to happen. <clears throat> it all set up. This is why, you know, you can look back at the scriptures and see how in, in the Old Testament it's pointing towards Jesus and his crucifixion and his death. Jesus died according to the scriptures. Praise God. Him, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Jesus did not do anything worthy of death. We did. Jesus took our place, took our place on that cross. That's the death we should be dying. We should have died. But praise God, because of Jesus, we escaped the wrath to come. We escape the consequences of our actions. We escape the consequences of our sins. Hallelujah. For David speaketh concerning him, I, for, I, for, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad, moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. See, this is what we have to look forward to. Right now, our flesh stinks. Even Paul says, you know, I want to do all these good things. I want to do all this good stuff, but the things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, those I do. And this is the same thing with us. We want to serve the Lord. We have a desire in our heart to serve the Lord. But this flesh gets in the way. It says, well, maybe later. Or some other time. Or right now this seems more important to me. God have mercy. Lord have mercy. All right? But he says, but he says, he says, but Paul, Paul says, he says, he says, so we know that in our flesh, we can't be pleasing to God. But here he says, here he, here he says that my flesh shall rest in hope. Well, Jesus is our hope. So he says, Paul, Paul writes, the, you know, at the end, end, of, end of Romans chapter 7, he, said, he says, I, I want to I do all these things, but I just don't. And the things I don't want to do, those I do. He says, oh, wretched man that I am. <coughs> He's throwing up his hand and saying, oh, wretched man I am. And then he asks a question. He says, who shall be able to deliver me from the body of this death? Who's going to deliver me from my flesh? <coughs> so he asks a question. The next verse, he answers it. He says, I thank God. Through Jesus Christ. God can deliver you. So that when you want to do something for the Lord, and you seek Him, you'll do it. 
instead of putting up with all the nonsense of the flesh. So when you're in him, you can do these things that you normally, because of the weakness of the flesh. And praise God. This is what, you know, uh, I was just talking, my, our brother Walt's in the hospital right now. Uh, and I was, I was talking to him, and he says, you know, and we're, t we're talking about sometimes, and he says, sometimes, sometimes we spread ourselves too thin. And we want to do all this stuff and do all this stuff and all this stuff, and the Lord says, stop. But we're disobedient. We keep on going. Now it's not. It's not God. That, it's not God gave him chest pains. But it's you know, just he didn't stop when he was supposed to stop. And he 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 he's told me he says, the spirit is willing. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Praise God. Mercy. Praise God. And he's doing well. Praise God. Praise God. I expect to see him home tomorrow. Hallelujah. Or maybe even tonight. I don't know. Praise God. So he says, I thank God. So God can deliver us from the body of his death. He can deliver us from the lust of the flesh. When we allow it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So with the mind, I serve the law of God. So we have this mind of Christ. We read it so many times in Ephesians, put on that mind of Christ. Or I should say in, in 1 Corinthians. We have the mind of Christ, put it on. With our mind, we serve the law of God, but with flesh, the law of sin. It's, it's your choice. You know, you can either go around doing your own thing, say, well, I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do this, and then you fall and you stumble, because you can't. By yourself, you can't. Uh, or you can say, the Lord willing, I'll do this. <laughs> and then, praise God. Hallelujah. So Jesus is our hope. So we've been talking about having this hope. It's not a hope that I get a job. Or a hope I get a raise. It's an assurance or a trust that we have in Him. I know. Even though I haven't seen it, I know that my place in heaven is assured. Yeah. Why? Because God cannot lie. Well, it's not a, a, oh, I hope I get to heaven. I hope everything's going to be all right. I know it is. I have this assurance. Now, can I prove it? Only by the word. And if you don't believe the word, I can't prove it. Hallelujah. But those that believe the word, give them the word and find out what the word of God says. That we do have this assurance. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, verse 27. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. This, this, this myth about Jesus going into hell and wrestling with, with Satan over the, over the keys keys to the kingdom is, is just baloney. Uh, it's right. garbage. It had nothing to do with him. When Jesus descended into the bowels of the earth, his back was towards hell. His back was to, towards all the sin and the corruption that was in hell. Hallelujah. And praise God, he took captivity and let it out. He took, he took paradise out of the bowels of the earth and took it above the third heaven. Hallelujah. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy confidence. Praise God that he makes, us, he, makes, he makes known to us the ways of life. Now, we have everlasting life, and we have an abundant life. We have an eternal life. And praise God, there are ways, once we have Jesus, we, there are ways to get to those li that life. It's, through him. it's all through him. Praise God. And we're to seek to know his ways. 
No, we can we can go out and do our own thing and, do, and walk our own path or walk our own way, and we can be miserable. Or we can go walk the way of the Lord, the way the Lord would have us to walk. In Bible study this week, someone came in, brought under conviction. I know she was brought under conviction. But all she said was, well, the Lord has to tell, the Lord has to tell you. I said, I, I knew that then she wasn't accepting. Mercy. The Lord was there to set her free. Because she wanted it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And thou shalt make me full of, of joy with thy countenance. Praise God that we have the presence of God within us. We have, praise God, we have Jesus within us, and he is our Savior, he is our Lord. Praise God that when we can recognize this and acknowledge him, that we can say, yeah, this is whom God says I am. Praise God. I am a child of God. I am a, a, an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. God is my Father. I can rejoice in this. Hallelujah. And as I start to rejoice, God is going to fill me with his joy. His joy is going to start bubbling out. Hallelujah. I, have to go, I don't have to go around as a sad sack all the time and say, oh, woe is me. I'm just struggling to get through day by day. It's like Brother Dean says, you know, say, instead of saying, good Lord, morning, we say, good morning, Lord, what do you have for me today? Amen. So we look forward to the day that we could spend with the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Full of joy in the Lord. Hallelujah. This is all David. David's speaking all this stuff. And praise God. Later on it goes on and says that David was a prophet. So he's prophesying the things to come. Hallelujah. Well, I thought David was a king. Well, he was a prophet also. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Okay, verse 29. Men and brethren, let me speak free, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. <coughs> Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seeing this spake, be, he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul is not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. See, Jesus said, Tarry in Jerusalem to be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And this is what happened in the upper room. They all came into one accord. They all said, we stopped the foolishness. Uh, they started with 500. By the time, by the day of Pentecost, there's only 120 left. That means 380 left. And they came into one accord, and praise God. The Holy Ghost descended upon them. They accepted Jesus. And praise God. And, and a sound came from heaven. Praise God. And, a, and a, a ball of fire came down. And it's cloven tongues. And it spread upon them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they, they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise God. And this is what he says. That which ye have now see and hear. 
And as they spoke in other tongues, they spoke of the mighty and the wonderful works of God. They didn't speak of their church. They didn't speak of, uh, of, the, of the, the choir. They spoke the wonderful works of God. Amen. And this is what you have to look for when you, it, 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 when you go and you check out a preacher. Is he preaching the word of God? Or is he giving you fairy tales? Or, or is, he is he telling you what the needs of the church are? You go and you hear the word of God. They that are sent of God will speak God's word. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Many times I've, I've watched preachers and see them when the anointing comes on. Mm -hmm. They may start out without any kind of different Bibles you have, but the anointing comes on they start quoting it. They start quoting scripture. It's from the King James Version. Amen. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. True. Praise God. I remember one time I was down in Conway, Pennsylvania, and I went to Assembly of God Church. I'm saying, Lord, is this where you want me to be? The preacher got up and started speaking. And every time he spoke, instead of saying Holy Spirit, he said Holy Ghost. That says, thank you, Lord. This is what now I know this is where I'm supposed to be. True. Praise God. True. Hallelujah. Go by the word. Amen. Amen. Don't go by what a, other people's opinions are, what they think. Well, but what does the word of God speak to you? True. What is the word of God telling you? True. Well, I don't know. Well, open your book and read. Amen. Seek it out. Praise God. Sounds familiar, Bob? Yep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. For, verse 34. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. The Lord, Lord God Almighty, saying to, to David's Lord, which is Jesus, Sit on my right hand. Jesus is not God. Amen. Jesus has a God. Amen. When he arose from the dead, he says, I must return to my Father and to your Father, and to my God and to your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God <laughs> hath made the same Jesus. See, God did it. God made that same Jesus who, hallelujah, who David saw, who David saw God say to, sit at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy foes or thy footstool. Mm -hmm. All right. He had made him, and praise God, he says, God has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified. He put the blame right where his Right where it was. Amen. Right where it should be. On us. Because it wasn't it wasn't the Roman soldiers. It was our sins. He says, God made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. God did it. You can argue with God. Be my guest. I'll get out of the way. Right. He goes on to verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What should they do? What should we do? We've heard what you said. And Peter answered them, said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall, re ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all, to, to all that are far off, even as many as our Lord, as the Lord our God, shall call. And praise God, He called us. <coughs> he called us, and we answered. We said, "Yes, Lord." Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And with many other words did He testify and exhort, saying, "Save yourselves from this untoward generation." You go out in the world; that's an untoward generation. Mm -hmm. And you can save yourself from it by turning to the Savior, which is Jesus. See, this is what repentance is. It's getting up, <coughs> stopping what you're doing, and turning toward God. Once you turn toward God, you don't have the intention in your heart, well, I'm going to go back into what I was doing before. I just want to get out of this mess. That's not repentance. That's right. Too often we can say, well, just get me out of this mess That's it. Hmm. With, the, with every intent to keep doing what we're doing. Well, you're going to get the same mess over again. Sure. Again and again and again, as long as you keep doing what you're doing. Because God is not a respecter of persons. He respects His Word. He says there's a law that if you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Instead of, re of, of sowing all the garbage that's out in the world that's part of this untoward generation, how about sowing the good stuff which is in the Word of God? The love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the meekness, the patience, the faith, the temperance, the fruit, hallelujah, that comes from God, that we can freely give. Freely we have received and freely we give. And as the more you give, the more you're going to get, because God will not be out of giving. <coughs> Praise God. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Hallelujah. Then they that, that gladly received his word were baptized, hallelujah, and the, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now it isn't a fear that you're afraid of something, it's a respect and awe, a reverence for the things of God. Hallelujah. And that all and and all that believed were together in all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all, as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The unity or the communion of the saints. Now we have a fellowship one with another, but our fellowship has to be with God the Father with his son Jesus. We just want to come together and just have a party. Well, that's, that's a certain kind of fellowship. But if we want to have a fellowship with God the Father where we are one in him and we seek to do his will, that's another kind of fellowship. And that's the true fellowship that we have. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour which is 3 o'clock. The hour of prayer is 3 o'clock. What time do we start church? 3 o'clock. Oh, okay. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, hallelujah, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked the alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. 
And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. As we did every day. Went up, received, tried, and begging for arms. Trying to get something. So we expected to receive something from Peter and John. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked, entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now as you go on, you're going to see this man is 40 years old. He's been lame from birth. So this is a, this is a miracle of God. Well, he can't walk. He has to, if he, you know, he gets strength his leg. Now, now he's got to learn how to walk. Jump? He can't jump. He, he can't even walk. <laughs> Praise God. But it says, he leaping up stood and walked. And entered into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. He wasn't unsure of himself. He didn't have wobbly legs. To leap and walk and leap and praise God, he had to strengthen those legs. Amen. Hallelujah. But here's Peter lifting him up. He lifted it up to the Lord. Now God is the author and the finisher of our faith. We could do nothing without him. But God, he says, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So God has set it up so that everyone will look to Jesus. Everyone has to do, because he says, he says, without Jesus, you could do nothing. He says, by him, or by Jesus, you believe in God. So you couldn't even believe in God without Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So because of Jesus, and we believe in God because of Jesus, and everything comes starts from him. So we are reacting to what Jesus has done. When we come to Jesus, we either accept or reject it. So we're, we are, there's a reaction. We either accept him or reject him. Now once we accept him, now God will react to us. And he will fill us with the spirit of his son. Now we react to that by having joy unspeakable and start rejoicing and praising God. Now God reacts to that by blessing us. And we react to that by giving thanks unto God. Right. So, praise God. So we react to whatever, whatever God has done. Praise God. We react to the Word of God. We either believe it or we don't believe it. When we believe it, then we act upon it. It's so, one thing to say, yeah, I believe. I believe God's speaking to me. I believe God is God is God God is God is speaking to me through his word. Okay. What's he telling you to do? Oh, he's telling me to do this and this and this. Well, then do it. If you don't do it, it's really not belief. Hallelujah. Or you, know, you react to the word of God by not believing. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, then you can't receive. We 
react to the blessings that God gives us by giving thanks. And we know that God will not be out giving. The more we give thanks, the more he's going to bless us. The more he blesses us, the more we give thanks. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> the word of God says we draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to us. When that prodigal son got up and repented, and he stood up, as long as he, he said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, he was sorry that he was in the mess he was in. But then he came to his right mind and said, I have sinned against my father and against heaven. And he got up, he stood up, and he went. He got out of the mess he was in. And he turned towards his father. And then his father came towards him. And that's how it is with our father. When we, when we come to our right mind, says, what am I, what am I, what am I doing? Why am I in, what? Why do I want to eat what the pigs eat? I could have much better. Praise God. Praise God. When we react to God and to his call, when we go towards him, then he'll come towards us. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Peter lifted him up. He did something. And praise God. He says, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were, all, they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the main... As the, as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when the people saw it, he answered on, when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as, as though by our own power or holiness, we had made this man to walk. <coughs> he could see, here's this man, and he's hanging on to Peter and John. He's not letting them go. And, and all the people are looking, and they say, hey, this was the guy that couldn't walk a step in his life. And here he is walking and leaping and praising God. What's with these two? Peter says, wait a minute, let's get everything straight right now. It's not anything I did. It's not by my power. It's not by my holiness or by my goodness. Hallelujah. That this man walks. What does he say? He says, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. By the name of Jesus, is what he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. By his name, and by faith in his name, this man is, is made strong. Whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him, hath given him this perfect soundness 
in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did your rulers. But those things which God before hath showed, showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Again, Jesus died according to the scriptures. And Jesus rose according to the scriptures. Praise God. This is what he says. Praise God. By the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. He said, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Where two or more are gathered together in the name of Jesus, he is in our midst. Amen. Praise God. In another place it says that in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. This is Jesus speaking to his Father. In the midst of the church, blessing praise unto thee. So when we're gathered in, the, and we're a church, and we're gathered here, and we're singing praises to God, Jesus is singing live right along with us. Praise God. Now he says, hallelujah, that your sins, you, you, you repent, or you turn away, and be converted, that your sins are blotted out, and praise God, all your sins are washed away. Hallelujah. Never to be called against you again. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Not just one time. Times. Every time you come together and you're seeking God with all your heart and Jesus is in our midst, there should be a time of refreshing. Amen. Praise God. There's a washing. There's a washing of the water by the word. Amen. Praise God. You may not know it now, but you're getting washed Amen. by the word. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a cleansing. A cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a purging. He says he will purge you from all your dead works Amen. to serve the true and the living God. There's a purifying. You are made holy by the word of God. The result is you're a new creature. Amen. Hallelujah. You're refreshed. You're going to be better leaving here than when you came in. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank it's the times of refreshing when we come together and we're in the presence of God, in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Hallelujah. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Moses was set to be a deliverer. And a prophet like unto him he prophesied of, which is Jesus. Who will deliver? Who deliver us from this body of sin? Who delivers us from this untoward generation? Who sets us free from the power of the enemy? A deliverer to take us out of Egypt, which is the world. <coughs> Praise God. And they that do not hear that prophet shall be destroyed. 
He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Praise God. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and, and those that follow after, as many as have, have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning every one of you from his iniquities. The things that keep us from receiving of God, we've been set free. We can turn away from them. Hallelujah. And as he spake unto the people, and this is, praise God, this is what he, it, again, as he, by the importance of seeking him, <coughs> when you seek him, you turn. You don't, don't you, you're not seeking after the things of the world. When you're seeking, and, and praise God, it's not a question of saying, well, I'm not going to do that. What you say is, I will seek the Lord. Amen. And then you go do it, and then you don't have to worry about not doing those things. Okay. God makes it so easy for us. If we try to resist in our in ourselves, you know, we can do it for a while. It's called will worship. Oh, I can do this. I don't have to take that. I don't have to be a partaker of that. I don't have to do that. And I won't do it. Notice how he says, I, 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 I. He that glories, let him glory in the Lord. Praise God. Glory. So by seeking him, you turn from your iniquities. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he spake unto the people, the priests and the captain captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and number of men was about five thousand. It came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. Big family affair. Talk about nepotism. <laughs> Get your brother a job. Get your, your relatives all. You know. Praise God. Praise God. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power, or by what name, have you done this? Don't you wish you were to ask questions like that? Mm -hmm. Just, <laughs> just open the door. Let me, just say, ask a question like that. Let me, go, let me go then. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. By what power, by what name have you done this? Oh, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> said unto them, Ye rulers of the people of, of the people and elders of Israel, <coughs> if we this day be examined of the good deed done done to the, to the important man by what means he is, is made whole be known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom ye crucified whom God raised from the dead even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Peter gave credit to whom credit is due. He says he's here by the power and the name of Jesus. This is the stone which, which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only one way. It's through Jesus. You can go through any other 
any other kind of religion you want. You can go, you can go through Buddha, you can go through Muhammad, you can go through uh, whatever you want. You can even go through Baal. Doesn't it, it's all the same. If it's not Jesus, you're lost. If you don't have Jesus, you're lost. Amen. There's only one way. People, people are going to say I'm narrow-minded, I'm bigoted, I'm prejudiced. Well, I'm sorry. That's the, just this is the way it is. Jesus is the only way, and I'm not sorry about that either. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Because I know, I know, I know somewhat of what Jesus went through for my salvation, and to to minimize it by saying there's another way, I can't accept that. Jesus is the only way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Paul, Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. Well, they were just dumb, stupid fishermen. Mm -hmm. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. That's good. Well, they may have been stupid in their sight, but they were pretty smart to stay with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Sin is stupid. Being disobedient to the Word of God is stupid. Not hearkening to the Word of God or listening to the Word of God is stupid. Being with Jesus is smart. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say, they could say nothing against him. <laughs> How could they say anything? He's been lying for 40 years. But when they had commenced, commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, Shall we, what shall we do to these men? For indeed a noble miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. But we cannot deny it. But it, but it had spread no further among the people let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. God placed with them the desire to speak the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So they could not help but speak the word of God. So, when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how that they might punish him because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. They could not deny something, something marvelous happened. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shown. And he was lame from birth. Never walked a step in his life. And here he is, walking, leaping, standing with Peter and John, even the next day, still standing with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. And being let go, they went into their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. They came into one accord. It's important to set your heart and affection on things above. Well, we all do this. He says, Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then he shall appear with you in glory. Hallelujah. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all them, all that is it, all that in them is. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage? 
and the people imagined vain things. The king of the earth, the kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. There's going to come a time when all the kings of the earth will raise up again. Against the Lord and against his Christ. Against the chosen one. Praise God. For of a truth, against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever they, thy hand and co thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold thy th their threatening. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. You notice what they did. It says, here's their threatenings. And they say, don't speak or teach in the name of Jesus. Don't speak of his name. Don't teach it in his name. And, he said, and they're saying, Lord... Do you see what they're saying about saying for telling us to do or not to do? Give us boldness. Here they are going against the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all the bigwigs in the temple. Two dumb, stupid fishermen being threatened. I said, Lord, give us boldness. Behold their threatenings, give us boldness. Hallelujah. For what? Grant unto thy servants that with, that with all thy boldness they may speak thy word. They that are sent of God will speak the word of God. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. In order for these signs and wonders to be done, the word of God had to be preached. Amen. Jesus says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Believe the word. So the word of God has to be preached. The word of God has to be preached before anyone can get saved. Their heart has to be prepared by the word of God. And a salvation message is not just Romans 10.9. A lot more to it than that. Hallelujah. May signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, because they're in one accord, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake of the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were one heart and one soul. And neither said any of them that ought of the things he possessed was his own. But all things, they had, but they had all things in common. And with great power gave he the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. Go we put a limit on the grace of God? Do we hinder the work, the work of God by saying, well, I got enough. I want to say, give me more, give me more, give me more. Give me what I need. Praise God. Neither was there any, any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And this distribution was made to every man according as he had need. And Joses, who by, by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpretation, the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, 
and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So the beginning, in the beginning, God worked mightily. But he's the Lord. He does not change. It's the same Lord yesterday, today, forever. Same working that happened here can happen now. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We do our part, but God will do his part. Amen. Again, Jesus and one of the reasons I was in here in Acts is because of this week that's coming up. Everyone's going to be mindful of what Jesus did. Here we know what he did. Why he did it. What was the purpose behind him doing it? That whosoever shall call upon him shall be saved. Let's come together.